fed up with escalating youth crime. Houses being broken into, cars being stolen, property being destroyed and even lives lost. Residents in Dubbo, a town in the New South Wales Central West, are pushing for a dusk till dawn curfew to fight the rising tide of crime. Now, we've been asking you at home what you think about that. Bruce says, if that's what it takes, yes. Kate says, we don't have consequences for poor behaviour now. What would the consequences be for breaking the curfew? Sandra says, and punish all the teenagers that behave? Absolutely not. That is ridiculous. Yvonne, curfews won't work. These youth and parents need to be made accountable. I think everybody agrees something needs to be done. Is it this? Let's bring in Mayor of Dubbo, Matthew Dickerson. Mayor, thank you for your time this morning. Uh, is this something you're considering? Uh, morning, Carl and Sarah. Good to see you both. Uh, certainly not something that we've considered at all and certainly something that's not within the realms of the powers of local government. So even if we were considering this, the best we could do would be to go and lobby the state government to do it. But that's certainly not something that's been on the radar or on the agenda. Crime is certainly something that no one likes to see, no one likes to hear about. But I don't see that there's a crime spree in Dubbo. Certainly there are isolated incidents. But when we look back at the data, look at the box R stats, which is something that I like to do to just keep an eye on those stats. If we look at the previous 12 months, we've only seen increases in crime of, say, 3.6% with motor vehicle theft. Compare that to the state, it's been a 17% increase across the state. So I don't like to see the increase happen at all, obviously, but it's not like it's such a market increase that it's alarming. Keep in mind that Dubbo is growing as well, which is fantastic. We've had a population growth of 0.91% in the last year. So if you grow your population, logically you're going to grow your crime a little bit as well. Again, I don't like that. It's not something that we advocate for, obviously, but it's not something that I'm having residents knocking on my door every day about at the moment. They're more worried about the roads, Carl and Sarah. That's their bigger issue at the moment, still getting the roads repaired back to the state they were before all that rain we had last year. They may not be knocking on your doors, but they're certainly making waves on social media um, calling for this kind of intervention. You'd be aware of that, wouldn't you? Uh, certainly, I've seen some of that commentary on social media. So, 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 I'm you, not sure so, so you are aware of it, um, but you're not going to listen to it? Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, um, Carl and Sarah, that social media sometimes is a, a little bit alarmist, and so some of the commentary there on social media is at the extreme. But again, we've got to consider our 55,000 residents, and it's not as if it's the number one issue that people are talking to me about at the moment. Yes, I read a variety of social media sites and take notice of what's on there, but some social media commentary about a curfew is not enough to go and try and implement a curfew. And some of those comments you posted there just at the beginning of this segment, mm. I agree entirely. I don't think necessarily it would work, but also the resourcing of that to police that. Our police do a fantastic job mm. here at the moment. Probably one of the issues they see mm. is when they catch people committing crimes, it's about getting them into the court system and keeping them yeah. in that system rather than them going through a revolving door. That's an entirely known the matter, but it's an important one, right? Uh, absolutely right, and that's something that is frustrating. Obviously, the police, being public servants, can't come out and make commentary mm. about that. I'm a little bit more able to make those comments, and it's certainly something that is frustrating when people do commit crimes. The police do a great job catching them, but then they see them out on the street 10 minutes later, and that is a bit frustrating for the community and the police, without a doubt. Yeah, the resourcing that you point out there, obviously, is, a, is something difficult to overcome, I suppose, but at the end of the day, people are scared. So it's really about easing their concerns and finding a way to do that. And you want to prevent, obviously, the, the scenes that we've seen, for example, in Maryborough. Yeah, that's exactly right. But we're not seeing those drastic scenes here in Dubbo. That's, the, I suppose, the bottom line here. People feel safe walking down the street in Dubbo. I feel safer walking down the street in Dubbo than many other places across the state or across the nation. So it's not that alarmist state at the moment. There are some, some steps being taken. There's been a drug rehab centre that's been announced for Dubbo. hasn't been built yet. But I think that will help certainly with that crime. And certainly we do work, council does work with the police mm. to try and work out any strategies that we can put together. We've got youth activities. In fact, we had a, a big youth activity recently with the youth week that was on. So, again, getting some of those youth engaged. There's about $30 million that's been announced for a PCYC, a new PCYC here in Dubbo, in conjunction with Charles Street University. So getting youth involved in activities is a really important part of that as well. That is no doubt about that. Mm. Um, PCYC is doing an incredible job during that. Doing that, um, Mayor, thank you for your time this morning. Uh, it's, a, it's a growing issue in a lot of regional towns and obviously in the big cities as well. Thank you for being with us.